next one. I did my MA in Arts in, at Goldsmiths College in London. There was one particular uh, lesson in a course and the, the title was The Family Album. And I would just, as a child, I remember sit for hours and just flip through the photos and sit with people who told me stories about those photos. So I was always very intrigued by that. And then I started it with my personal photo of my parents from 1972. Uh, before, like 10 years before I was born. And I did the first photo of the project, which then I didn't know would turn out to be a project, but I did with my partner, posing as my parents. And I was curious about other people as well, and to see how it works with them. Hello. Hello, good morning. The ursprüngliche Anlass for this photo was the Fasnacht in Nimmst, also the Burba Fasnacht. And my mama had given damals anzogen und die Rolle übernimmt eben jetzt die Schwester. Du wirst doch bei dir. <lacht> so in one shooting, for example, it was, um, it was funny that the, the person who photographed the, the same photograph, the original one, just had, still had the camera with him. So he gave it to me and I would use this one to establish the right angle. It was very, very helpful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you flip through family albums of people who live in Austria, then it's different from when you flip to family albums of people who live in Israel. So you see different backgrounds, different school trips, ski vacations, clothes of the area, history events. The hardest one to establish on spot was uh, Michaela Fessel shooting with the two couples dancing. Uh, that took hours and hours to set up that scene. And uh, Perge shooting. It was winter clothes and here it was still summer, so it was even impossible to buy winter clothes. So I just had to buy H&M female cardigans for boys and then paint them with like a red marker and a blue marker by hand. It's like the entire process of me looking at the people becoming other people for a split of a second. And of course it's not real and of course they're posing and it can be exactly the same and they're not the same person. They're altogether different people. But it's just these small bits of time when you see that something just happened. Okay. And try like to break a really big smile. Yeah. yeah, because then you can see like the shape of the face that you had. Okay. Sometimes you see a very, very intimate look towards the photographer, not necessarily the camera. And then there's me, and I need to become that person who gets that intimate look out of that person. And then you look at me. So? And then, no, andersrum. So, and then, look so. So? And then, so, and then, and then, look at me. 
Oh, is it okay, Oli? It... No, you need no. to put your hand. <laughs> <laughs> when you look through the photos, you look at your memories, but they're not your memories anymore. It's just moments in time. And just think about how you remember certain moments in time. You remember them many times from the frame itself and not from your memory. Okay. It was in, how is it pronounced? Kuhe? Kute. And uh, we were there a few days before uh, to, to see where we're going to do the shooting. And then we had um, the team here manage to get the guy with a Porsche. Uh, it wasn't as old as the one in the original photo, but it was quite old. And then we came in the morning with all the equipment and we saw the guy with the Porsche there having uh, a drink or something. And behind it, there was a mountain. And so everything had to work together. The location of the Porsche, the right angle, the right angle of the mountains behind it. And of course, uh, Annalena, uh, the daughter was about to shoot for this particular photograph. If you, yeah, if you... I think Oli should know. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. A few moments ago, it was not very good. I was from my father, I was after 30 years old, and there was a lot of stuff. It was good, but you can't hide it. So you're... You're a bit back? Yeah, about. Oh, and some airplanes in the background. That's the thing. It wasn't back then. The team here has already found locations for me and found some of the accessories that I needed for the shootings. And then I met the people here before doing the photo shootings. We met, we talked a little bit, and then do the shooting. Like set the lighting, set everything in the right location, um, putting the tripod in the right place, asking the people to move to the right location and see how they are situated in front of the camera and with the background behind, so to see how it works together. Komisch. <laughs> strange. Yeah. To look like her. Do you see it? Yes. Yeah. Especially when, when I look like I, because I know that photo so well. Yeah. So, yeah, the picture appears to me when uh -huh. I look like. Mm -hmm. yeah. The shooting with uh, Katarina Randolph was emotional and I think in a way we anticipated that um, having met Katarina before and discussing her uh, family history and um, her mother passed away at a really young age when, he was a, she, when she was a little girl and it just it stays, it's there all the time. Pictures, they, they're so powerful that they could do that to you. They can make you happy and they can make you sad and they can lift you up and bring you down and, and, and they're just pieces of paper, just like these artifacts that they have no meaning to the point where the, the image is printed on them and then that's it. You just, you have to keep them, you can't throw them out, you can't do anything with them uh, because it's too emotional. It's just normal people on the walls. There are 40 photographers there that are not me. It, it's the act of taking something which is very personal, which is usually stored in the darkness, and put it on walls of a gallery for people to look at and think about all over again as a different thing rather than a personal family album photograph. <laughs> 